Well, hello, and welcome back to our series on getting your event ready using Town Hall and Microsoft Teams. Well, gang, we did it. From deciding to use Town Hall all the way to going live, our steps worked, and we had a really smooth event. Now that it's over, I want some data. We want to know how many people came, how long they stayed, for sure need that recording. So let's take a look at Town Hall's native post-event reports. From the Teams calendar, we'll click on our event, and at the top, you'll see plenty of tabs like attendance and Q&A, but everything's actually better organized and manage events. So we'll click there. From here, we'll go to reports on the left and it says we only had one attendee, which that's not right. And you might run into this issue too. At the top under this carrot, you'll see different dates and times. Our event was on September 3rd. We'll click that and there we go, much better. I don't know why it's like this. It seems to be an artifact of like regular Teams meetings. Anytime a presenter hops back on the call after you've ended the meeting, anytime maybe an attendee joins the call. Long story short, just make sure that you have the correct date and time selected first thing. So now we can see how many people attended, the start and end time of the meeting, the meeting duration, and the average attendance time. Below, we can also see specifics of everyone who joined. We can download a CSV of all of this at the top right, and we can download our Q&A as a CSV file by clicking the caret and clicking Q&A. If you just want to quickly preview the Q&A without opening Excel, you can navigate to the Q&A tab at the top of the event bar. Let's talk about the recording. Uh, there seems to be a thousand places that you can download the file, but Town Hall has sort of moved away from where Teams Live event and attendee could click the link when the event ended and then they saw the recording which is unfortunate. But there's a pretty nifty little email web page feature. From Manage Events, we'll go to Recordings on the left. And here we can publish as is if we want. But if you want to be super extra, which we always do, let's instead find the file in our SharePoint. A quick way to do that is to just click the recording, go to Open in Stream on the top right here. And once in Stream, you can select the file name and see where it lives. So editing a live recording can be as simple or as complicated as you like. So like for simple in stream itself, if you're in editing mode at the top right here, you can select trim on the sidebar. Here you can at least cut the native teams meeting slate at the beginning and the little ending slate that can be extremely long sometimes. You can also cut bits in the middle if you need to get rid of an entire section for whatever reason, but we don't need to. Um, so bing, bing, boom, done, and that's edited. But let's say you want to do way more, right? You want to replace a playback video with the actual file, or you want to do some audio correction or color, or whatever. What you're going to do is upload that file separately in your SharePoint and we'll link to it in a second. So back in manage event here, if all we did was trim a little in stream itself, we're good to go. This is the edited file. If you've uploaded a whole new export, select publish from OneDrive, navigate to your video, and select it there. Before we hit publish, let's triple check our theming is correct because Town Hall is going to send the video out on like this branded web page, so we want to make sure that branding is correct. We're good. So back in recording, let's hit publish. Back in the details tab, if you go down here, you'll see this is the message all your presenters and attendees just got. So let's select the view recording button and look at that. We got a nice little page. It's got our branding. It has the edited recording file we want, our event details, and even includes the speakers. That's that's pretty nice. Um, although you will notice there's no ability to comment on the video. So for that, you'll have to send out the stream link directly. These are your options. Otherwise, yo, that's it. That's how you do a Town Hall on Microsoft Teams event. You decide on Town Hall. You set up your Town Hall in Teams. You get your presenters and attendees invited. You set up your Q&A widget, have your presentation and your videos ready to share, you go live and you get your post-event reports. So why do we have one more video in this series? Because there is a single toggle buried deep in the Manage Event menu that has the power to take your event from this to this, or this, or even this. Next up, in our last video of this series, we marvel at the power of RTMP and get to know Work Tank a little bit more in the process. But for now, what do you think? 
I really like Town Hall. I love that you can have multiple presenters on screen simultaneously. That's something Teams Live Event can never do. But they are pretty different. Are there any features or updates in Town Hall you'd like to see in the future? Anything that you liked about Teams Live Events that you wish would carry over? Let us know in the comments. For Work Tank, my name's Sean, and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more on all things live events and check out our website at worktankglobal.com for more videos, blog posts, and information on how to take your event to the next level.